welcome back to Amazing Animals. Today, we're gonna introduce you to many of the small mammals that call Amazing Animals home. two of our kinkajous that call amazing animals home. These guys were ex-pets that people had. So they are a nocturnal species from Central and South America. A lot of people think they look like monkeys. Oh, here comes one. But they actually are related to raccoons and platamundis. Hi, you want that? There you go. That's Kiwi. He was a, our first guy that we got. He was an owner-surrendered pet. And then Rufio, the one behind him in the tunnel was actually found running around someone's backyard right here in central florida so that is definitely not where they belong unfortunately people get these as pets i don't know if you see those lovely nails that he's got they can really do some damage so they can tear up a lot of things they also have really impressive uh, teeth and they have that prehensile tail which kiwi's showing off here he's using his tail to hold on to the top of the wire there and help him balance so they can completely hang upside down they can climb upside down on trees in fact so they're very agile very quick uh, but we love having them here they like to wake up for their food they're your friend if you have food otherwise they just want to be left alone and sleep So this is Pete and Patty, and they are our Patagonian cavi, and they are the third largest rodent species from Central and South America, and they both came to us as ex-pets. Someone bought them in a pet store, and um, they realized how quick they grow, how much they eat, and how much they poop. They do not make a very good house pet, um, but they get along great here. Again, being rodents, um, they are very social, and they breed a lot. They have a lot of babies. Um, we have actually homes set up for them. They're actually threatened in the wild due to habitat loss, um, over collecting for the pet trade, and because they only live about two or three years in the wild. Here at Amazing Animals, they can live into up to six, seven, eight years old, but in the wild, um, they are a food source for almost every other predator that lives in the rainforest. So these guys are pretty much at the bottom of the food chain, um, and it's the survival of the fittest out there. And a lot of people think they look very funny. They have a little bit longer back legs than they do front legs. And they actually can run pretty fast and jump really high. And they look kind of like a mixture between a rabbit and a kangaroo, I think, is what I hear most out of people. All right, so I'm here with Bam Bam, and he is one of our striped skunks here at Amazing Animals. And skunks are a really awesome part of our ecosystem. They are found all over North America, and they are excellent little foragers. So you might see on Bam Bam, he's got some pretty nice long nails. Skunks like to dig and eat anything and everything they can. So in the wild, they're going to dig up and eat lots of bugs. So they're great on keeping down ticks and different bugs and mosquitoes they'll eat. Uh, they'll eat rodents, snakes, fresh fruits and veggies, eggs, you name it, skunks will eat it. Um, Bam Bam we ended up getting called in to take in because someone had him as a house pet. So he has had his stinkers removed. He cannot spray anybody anymore, which is why he can never be back in the wild. That is their number one defense mechanism. So if you do ever see a skunk in the wild, uh, you don't usually have to worry about getting sprayed as long as you're not scaring them or threatening them in any way. It can actually take over a week for a skunk to be able to spray again once they've sprayed once. Now if they do spray you, that can shoot out about 10 feet and you are going to be quite stinky for quite some time. 
In fact, it can even burn your eyes. It's almost like getting sprayed with pepper spray. So it's a very pungent gas and it works really well for the defense because if a wild animal is trying to threaten a skunk and they spray them, they can't see for almost 30 minutes and that gives the skunk plenty of time to run away and hide again. So they have this beautiful black and white color for camouflage. Since they are nocturnal, they're gonna be up at night and being black and white is going to help them blend in really nicely that way. So they're going to forage, eat all sorts of fun stuff. Uh, like I said, as a house pet, it didn't work out too well for Bam Bam because he foraged in their house, which means he tore up their couch, their carpet, got into cabinets. He's a very smart boy with a very good nose. So we love having him. He's a great ambassador for us to bring out and let people meet up close and personal. It's not very often you get to see a skunk up close without getting worried about being sprayed. So he's been an awesome ambassador and he's actually getting really old for us. He's about seven or eight years old, which in the wild skunks only live about two or three years. So he's doing really well with us here and just enjoying being a lazy old man. <laughs> So this is Dill, and Dill is a three-banded armadillo from the rainforest and the grasslands of Central and South America. And he's called a three-banded armadillo because these three big bands that he has on his back. Here in North America, we have seven and nine-banded armadillos that are way bigger. This is the smallest species of armadillo and the only one that can curl up into that complete ball. And that complete ball makes him a species of animal that is actually closely related to sloths and anteaters. They're in the exarthid family, um, and they're the only ones that can do this because they have actually space and cartilage between each vertebrae that allows them to curl up into a ball. So believe it or not, anteaters and armadillos are related to sloths. Who would have thought that? But they are really cool. He curls up into that ball. He is a mammal like you and I, so he has these little whiskers and hairs sticking out of his shell. And what that is, is that actually helps him be able to sit in a hole that he buries like that, and he can feel vibrations and sense predators coming, and he knows when he needs to curl up and protect himself. And he fits perfectly. This is his tail. This is his head. He has two ears back here. He has a little nose. There's a piece of bedding in the way of his little nose. He has a little nose down there. He has great smelling, not so good eyesight, and he eats a lot of bugs, grubs, and worms. And these guys, unfortunately, are also threatened in the wild due to habitat loss and collecting for the pet trade, and they also get eaten a lot by native people. Really cool species. He's a good looking guy. And this triangle head here, the, actually the plates there, are a fingerprint each and every single three-banded armadillo that is different and that's how you can tell them apart and this shell back here is actually made up of the same stuff that your fingernails are made up of So I'm here with Rocco and he is a Quadamundi, which is a close relative to the raccoon, but they are native to Central and South America. Good morning, buddy. If you hear the squeaking noises, that is his, that's his excited, happy noise. He loves getting back rubs. Um, and Rocco, they are uh, really impressive animals. They've got really sharp nails and teeth. Again, they're like a raccoon. They get into everything, they eat everything. And he's got a really fun nose that actually goes about 60 degrees each direction. A lot of people guess he looks like an anteater, but that nose is actually more like a pig's nose. It's used for rooting up. So he likes to dig big holes and find any little grubs or uh, food that we might hide for him for enrichment. So he has a great sense of smell. <laughs> <laughs> and he is pretty friendly because he did come to us from an ex-pet situation. So somebody had him as a pet, which as you can imagine by looking at him was not a very easy choice to do. Um, so we ended up getting the call to take him in and he loves attention from people, but he also really loves playing with a lot of enrichment. We find that to be very important for animals to be physically and mentally healthy. He's on a healthy diet here. When we got him, the previous owner said he loved caramel and cookies and pies, which as you can imagine, it's not a very healthy diet for anyone including us so now he gets raw chicken eggs fish fresh fruits and veggies he's doing really well really active 
Uh, he loves playing with all of his toys, and a lot of enrichment is really important for animals. We like to do natural enrichment too, so we hide food. Like I said, we like to make him forage and really look for his food like he would naturally in the wild. He loves different smells. Quadamundis are actually quite stinky animals. I'm sure you might see my hands are actually turning orange from all the oils on him, so they love to scent mark on everything. So using different smells is a really fun natural enrichment for him. We do different spices and perfumes, and he'll rub and roll all over it set marking back over it. So it's really fun to have him to teach people about a species that you, again, you don't really see very often in zoos. In the wild, they're doing really well, um, but not many people here in the US even know about them. So it's awesome to teach people uh, that they're close relative to the raccoon, just like the kinkajous that you met earlier. And he is a fun little guy making all his happy noises. Now oh, Rocco, you good boy. You my good boy, yes you are. Thank you guys for tuning in today's vlog. We hope you enjoyed meeting all of our small mammals. Next week, tune in to meet our most famous residents, the sloths and the capybaras. Go out there and do something amazing.